In this video, we'll look at regression with Excel. It's technically, linear regression. And what we want to do with linear regression is take a set of data that's uh, paired. So we'll have our x and y. It's like our x values. These are like our y values. And we would like to get a scatter plot and a regression equation and all that good stuff. Well, let's first fill out the table. All right, and then we have a nice table and we can make it look a little nicer. Uh, so one of the things we want to do is to be able to get a general scatter plot, and to do that we can just select all the data and then go to insert, scatter, and scatter with only markers. That'll give us a nice scatter plot there. And then we want to go ahead and put in the uh, axis labels. So on the horizontal we have the uh, depth in feet, and then on the vertical we have the dive time in minutes, and we'd like to be able to then get a regression equation. So to do this, put the mouse cursor over one of the data points and then right click and you'll see that all the data points get selected then go to add trend line uh, you can also actually just get to it up here from trend line but let's do right click and then add trend line and uh, we're going to do linear trend line and we're going to have it display the equation and the r-squared value on the chart so check those boxes and then hit OK. So you now have the equation and you can actually <coughs> have this calculated for each of these values. So it equals negative 1.1143 times x plus 127.24. And so this evaluates that equation at each of the points we already have data at. And then we can then get the residuals. And the residuals just take the observed values and then subtract the expected values. So it's positive when the dots are above the line and negative when the dots are below the line. And you can get the residuals for each point. Sometimes they ask for that. Uh, it may also be asked to uh, interpret the slope. And what it means is for every increase in x by 1, so for every foot you dive deeper, the maximum dive time decreases and so slope tells you how y increases or decreases as you increase x by one so for every time you increase x by one if your slope is negative it tells you y will decrease by that amount so y decreases uh, 1.1143 minutes if it was a positive slope we'd say it increases by that amount And intercept. A lot of times these intercepts go outside the bounds of what we're working with and don't make a lot of sense. Um, the y intercept is when x is zero. So with uh, a dive time, or sorry, a depth of zero feet, your dive time is 
127 minutes. And the x-intercept says with a depth of... And we'd have to, of course, figure out how far we'd have to go. So we would want to... do this. You could uh, format this. You could forecast this a little into the future. And you see that it's right around um, 115. So we don't really want to go down that deep because we've basically run out of dive time. All right. Um, now let's look at the correlation coefficient. This is a lot of times lowercase r in books. And you can calculate this with the function corel. And you just put in the x values first, and then a comma, and then the y values. And then close the parentheses. And r squared. So r is the correlation coefficient, r squared is the coefficient of determination, and r squared is r squared. And, you know, we came up with a version of that over here, but this one's a little more accurate. We can get more digits there if we want. And what it tells us is that uh, if r squared is close to 1, that's a good fit. If r, is close to zero, r squared is close to 0, that's not a good fit. So we'd like this to be close to 1. With r, it's the uh, same thing, except it could be closer to negative 1. You want it to be away from 0, either close to 1 or negative 1. Um, the, sign, excuse me, the sign of r tells you that your s slope sign is the same. So negative r is a negative slope. Positive r is a positive slope. So based on that, we would say this is a good fit, right? You see the picture. You see the r values. Um, but you might think, well, how close to 1 does it have to be? So in order to do that, we really need to look at a table. And in the back of the book, there's a table for that. It's critical values of the correlation coefficient. And it depends on how many pairs of numbers you have. So we have in this table, we have uh, six rows, right? Six pairs of numbers. So the degrees of freedom will be uh, two less than that, and so we would take n minus two to be four, and our critical value is 0 0.811. So the decision is, since, um, and we'd use a negative, right? So you, you, it says plus and minus. If r is negative, then make this number negative. If r is positive, then make it positive. So here, since r is closer to negative 1 than the critical value, we have evidence of correlation. So that's how we can get real official about this and say. And you see that as we have more points in our set, we're allowing the r value to get closer to zero. All right, that should give you pretty much everything you need to get through this section.